Hi, everyone. Today, I would like to speak about racism, but from a personal perspective. So here is my question I'd like you to consider over the course of the next few minutes. What kind of world do we want to bequeath to our children, our grandchildren, and if we are fortunate, our great-grandchildren? Do we want them to inherit a world plagued by racism, intolerance, hate? Or do we want to provide a world in which we are open to listening, to being flexible, to being tolerant, to being understanding? I'm reminded of a song from South Pacific, a song by Rodgers and Hammerstein. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are oddly made, of people whose skin is a different shade. You've got to be carefully taught. With those of us who were taught in an atmosphere of tolerance, are we willing to stand up and to speak out where and whenever necessary? And those of us who were raised and taught to live with intolerance, are we willing to be open enough to listen and perhaps overcome our background? So I want to share some of my personal story. I was born in Newark, New Jersey, and while I lived in an adjacent town, both of my parents worked in Newark. My mother was a school teacher in Newark for nearly 50 years, and the few times I went to visit the school, there were no white students in her class, but I never thought about it. They were just young children. My father worked in a Newark glass company, which had two bosses. One was this diminutive, jovial Jewish guy, and the other was a very stately, dignified man, an African-American with a wonderful smile. And occasionally, both these men, Seymour and Alan, would come over to our house to consult with my father. And I recall always greeting them as Seymour and Alan. It never made a difference to me, the color of skin, their religion. That was all irrelevant. That's how I was raised. To give another illustration, fast forward a few years. Now, I was always interested in politics, even as a teenager, but I cannot recall many post-election speeches given by any politician, winner or loser. But I remember one. It was the night in Newark when Ken Gibson became the first African-American mayor of the city. And I recall TV focusing on the headquarters of one of the most notoriously racist politicians of Newark, who was in his headquarters, many people had gathered, and there was a lot of rancor. And I remember him standing up and trying to calm the crowd by saying, don't give the supporters of now Mayor Gibson the satisfaction of watching us at odds with one another. And I remember thinking that this was an ultimate moment. This was a comeuppance for this man whose racist comments had disturbed me for several years. That is the one post-election speech that I remember. Well, if a 16-year-old Jewish white kid can recall that event and recall being so filled with with joy and elation that a black American had been elected mayor of Newark, it suggests that we can be taught not only to be intolerant, but we can taught to be open and caring and embracing. So fast forward now a few more years. The summer of 1974, I was a counselor for a group of Jewish teenagers traveling cross country. We were not just traveling to see the sites, but we were a group that was Sabbath observant. We observed the laws of keeping kosher. And for some inexplicable reason, our organization placed us for a Sabbath weekend on the strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. And to make a 
long story short, something had occurred with our original hotel, and we were subsequently put in what I can best describe as a dive. It had facilities for sleeping, but there was nowhere to eat. There was nowhere for us to have a meeting room where we would gather to, to pray and have our meals. We were fortunate to find just a few blocks down the strip, the old Thunderbird Hotel and Casino, open to us coming there and having our meals. They were willing to take all of the, the, our tins of kosher food and they would heat them up for us. They provided us with a room on the second floor of the casino. So here we were on Friday night, 50 people dressed in Sabbath finery, carrying our prayer books, entering a casino which on Friday night was a, was a place of major activity. We walked in and it was as if the entire world stopped. We looked at everybody enjoying a night of gambling. They looked askance at us wondering, who were these people from a foreign country, from a foreign territory? Well, we managed to not only endure that weekend, but it became one of the most satisfying Sabbaths our group enjoyed. And it is so memorable, I tell the story fondly today. But on a greater symbolic level, here we were, a group of 50 Sabbath observing Jewish people occupying the same building with many who were there to gamble and to have fun on Friday night. Two totally contrasting worlds, yet we managed to coexist within the same building. So I would pose that question in a, glo the, a question in a global sense. How can we, despite our differences in politics, our differences in style, our differences in tastes, in interests, our differences in look, in, in, scholar, in color, in sexual orientation, how can we occupy the same building? and coexist. I am reminded of the Hebrew words to a psalm, words that have been popularized through Jewish music. Most Jewish children, when they begin their Jewish education, learn the words and learn the melody. Hinematov umanayim, shevet achim gam yachad. How good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell together. I would like to alter the English translation to transform those words from a statement to an expression of hope. How good and pleasant it can be if only sisters and brothers could dwell together, could sit together, could be open to one another. Unfortunately, we live in a world where that kind of tolerance, that kind of dwelling does not exist. As a Jew, I am too familiar with anti-Semitism. And I'm reminded of the horrible terrorist attack on the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. African Americans are constantly assaulted. And we know that Asian Americans as well have suffered from their share of hate. How can we sit together and, and learn from one another and learn at least to be open and to be tolerant? Years ago, my first full-time rabbi position was in Bradenton, Florida. And Bradenton is known for two things, the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Tropicana orange juice not necessarily in that order. But Bradenton was also a small town. I was the first full-time rabbi, and there were very strong elements of racism within the community. But the first year I was there, I was privileged to participate in a program that was entitled For Women Only. A group of women in the town of Bradenton decided that they would get together people from various backgrounds, various faith communities, and they would spend a day enjoying each other's company. 
through meals, but more important, through various kinds of discussion. And they sat, they broke down into small groups, and they would talk about their own faith. They would talk about their customs and their traditions. And several of the clergy, myself included, had an opportunity to join them and to draw from our own tradition and to be part of what was a remarkable, remarkable event. Brought together well over 100 women from throughout the town, open to listening, open to sharing their stories, but to taking delight in the stories of others. And I remember one of the organizers of this program came up to me during a brief interlude, and she said, you know, a few years ago, we never would have come together like this. This kind of program would have been impossible. And now look what we are doing. It takes just a few people to be open enough to say, I want to bequeath my children a world which is characterized by tolerance and openness, a world in which we're willing to dwell together within the same building. I live in Great Neck, New York, and Great Neck over the years has become a diverse community. And yet we are still plagued by bouts of racism, of hate and ignorance. But one of the more remarkable activities that has taken place in town concerned a middle school where my, my children went, where my children went for a few years. This middle school every year programmed a night of diversity, which was divided into two parts. Part one, people would bring in different kinds of, of food representative of their respective cultures. But it was part two of this cultural event, which was even more impressive. Students, again, representing the various faith or cultural groups within the school, put together a dance or a song, and they performed in front of the entire student body as well as the parents in attendance. I, I think about this event often because if it could happen in one community, why not everywhere? What if throughout our country, our school systems, our government institutions, our faith communities, if we all got together to plan nights and days like this, where we could sit and we could share good food, company, we could learn from one another, we could ask about each other's traditions, we could ask the difficult questions, but as long as we are willing to sit together as brothers and sisters, there is that chance that we will leave for our children a world better off than it was when we were young. So I have one final story. Recently, I traveled to Israel for a brief trip that was as memorable as any trip I have ever taken. We were a group of four or five rabbis joined by members of a New York state church, leaders from that church, Together, we were going to travel for six days, and we would experience Israel from a Jewish perspective as well as from a Christian perspective. What made this trip so remarkable was that we were able, as, as Jews, to share the beauty of a Jewish Sabbath. We were able to share the joy that we felt when visiting a Jewish holy site. But in addition, we as Jews had an opportunity to learn about the Christian holy sites that we had known of, but we had never really experienced firsthand. We watched as our church brothers and sisters not only expressed such elation, being able to visit sites representing the origins of their tradition, but then they would sit down and they would sing their songs and express joy in their own words of, of prayer. And we would counter blending in by sharing our own songs, such as the one that I quoted before. That was a trip which demonstrated to me that we can 
continuously learn from one another. And even in a place which for me was a center of holiness, I had this privilege of experiencing Israel from the eyes of our Christian sisters and brothers. And just incidentally, that group was led by Pastor Clara Rivera and her husband, Mariano, who many of you would recognize. So I'm going to return to my original question. Are we willing to step forward and present our children, our grandchildren, and great-grandchildren with a world that is blessed by tolerance, by openness, by respect, by a willingness to disagree, but be open simultaneously? Or are we going to cling to our old ways and leave them a world which is plagued by intolerance and by hate? One final Jewish teaching. In ancient Israel, there were two great rabbis. One was called Rabbi Hillel, and the other was Rabbi Shammai. And we learn that when students of Rabbi Hillel would sit down to try to determine the nature of a specific law, before they offered their own opinions, they would go to see what the students of Shammai school had to say. And even if they would ultimately disagree, and perhaps disagree even vehemently, they would accord the other school that kind of respect by learning what they were doing, by being open to listening to their stories, to their accounts, to their beliefs. That is the kind of world I hope we can leave to our children, a world where we might have been taught to hate, but where we can overcome hate and a world where we can listen, we can be open to learning from one another, still ask the difficult questions about one another's faiths and, and, and to be honest in our discomfort with other people, but to emerge feeling as if we are now no longer foreign to one another, but true sisters and brothers. Thank you very much.